So what I'm about to show you is something that the textbook doesn't deal with actually for a few exercises, which um, to me seems a bit strange because this is kind of uh, a basic fact in the, in the topic of parametrics. Like, what does it mean, this parameter that we've introduced? And uh, you can understand what it means now. There's nothing holding you back. There's no um, other kind of like foundation knowledge that we need to establish. Uh, you have all of the pieces and all the tools already. And so even though you're not going to do anything with this just yet, like you're not going to use this um, piece of knowledge just yet, I feel like it's an important thing to establish early on. So I want to talk about the parameter. So we, we've got this guy here, T. We said that's the parameter. Um, it's what sort of drives both X and Y. X and Y aren't connected to each other so much as both of them are connected to T, to the parameter. But what is the parameter? Okay, now to establish that, we actually need to use uh, the tools that we learned from calculus and a tool that you maybe wouldn't expect to appear here, which is the chain rule. Now, I'll come to the chain rule in a second. Uh, you wouldn't think that you need the chain rule to do any calculus on anything like this, uh, which is true, the chain rule will come in an unexpected way. So to illustrate that unexpected way, I want you to notice, just look at this line. Just forget that there's this here for a second. Just look at that. Now what you've got is x as a function of t. x is a function of the parameter, right? Which means that uh, we, can, we can differentiate this thing. Now how would, um, what would the right hand side look like when we're using this function notation? What does it look like when we differentiate this? We would normally write that as f dash t. You know, f turns into f dash. When you have a look at the left side hand side though, it looks a little bit different from what you would expect because the variables are different, right? We're used to having y as a function of x, but here I have x as a function of t. So my letters are all jumbled up. I'm not going to have dy on dx out of this line. For starters, there's no y. And uh, secondly, this is not a function of x, it's a function of t. So instead of dy on dx, I'm actually going to have, because you look at the positions of the variables, I'm going to have dx on dt. That's what f dash t is in this context. Okay? Now, I can work out what that is. It's, it's not complicated. This is a really easy function. Remember, even though you've got a and t, which are both pronumerals, they're different kinds of pronumerals. a is a constant. It's, it's a focal length. The parabola doesn't have like a different length uh, focal length here and a different focal length there. Uh, it's always the same number. I don't know what it is in this context, which is why I'm labeling it with a pronumeral, but that's a constant. T, on the other hand, is a variable. That's the whole point of using it here, that as you change T, you change the position you are on the parabola. So when I differentiate this, that's why I'm doing it with respect to T, and I'm treating A like a pronumeral, like, like pi, right? That's not, a, it's, it's, it's a symbol, well, it's a letter, but um, it stands for a number, and so does A. So when I go ahead and differentiate dx on dt, this is just a constant times T. Well, when you differentiate like this, this is a power rule, right? Your power one, yeah, it's just, it's just two A. There's your derivative with respect to T, with respect to the parameter, uh, when you have a look at the x function, okay? So just uh, file that in the back of your mind. We can do the same thing here, right? So whereas um, I got dx on dt over here, I'm going to get dy on dt from this. And you can see, like, following the same pattern, again, a is just a, a constant, it's just a number. So when I differentiate here, I get 2at. Now, I mentioned before that uh, we were going to use the chain rule. Um, I didn't use the chain rule in either of those spots just now to differentiate either of these functions because they were so simple, no chain rule required. But chain rule, if you recall, is called chain rule because it takes a bunch of, um, it takes a bunch of derivatives and literally chains them together. And what happens is out of this, like we'd introduce u as a substitution, uh, what happens is you get the actual derivative you're interested in by stringing together these other derivatives. Okay? Now there's no u substitution, like here, in this situation. I've just got a different letter. It's t, the parameter. Right? You can see I've got two derivatives that have dt in them. Except for one little catch. Uh, with the chain rule, you notice, in order to make this happen, you've got to have du on the bottom and du on the top as well. But I happen to have dt both on the bottom. So 
that's no problem. Uh, all I have to do is put dt on the top of one of these derivatives. Now, which one makes the most sense? Well, usually when I end up with something, I want dy on dx, because that's rise over run. That gives me gradient. There's no reason why I can't work out dx on dy. In fact, sometimes later on in this course, we will work out dx on dy, and you'll see the reasons for that later. But um, run over rise is not anything that means anything to me at the moment. So I'm just going to go with rise over run. That means I want dy on the top. That, this one is fine, distributive sign. But this one, I want the dx on the bottom, because I want the, the run on the bottom. So therefore, I'm just going to take the reciprocal of the left-hand side, which means I should take the reciprocal of the right-hand side. OK, so far, so good. So here comes the chain rule part. I'm going to take these two derivatives, which are both in a good uh, uh, configuration now. I'm going to take these derivatives, and I'm going to chain them together. So if I say dy on dt times dt on dx, then just doing the substitution, there's the 2at. And here is 1 on 2a. All right. On the left-hand side, as predicted like we have normally with chain rule, your dt's cancel. It's, it's, that's why we write these derivatives of a fraction to, to clarify that this can happen. So you just get dy and dx on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, well, stuff cancels, right? Like 2a, 2a, all gone. So all that leaves behind is t. OK. Now, put, put a big box around this. What, what, what does this mean? OK. Um, dy on dx, when we introduce this, like I was talking about rise and run as over and before, what does it mean? dy on dx is just a statement of gradient, but it's the gradient function because the gradient changes all the time when you're dealing with um, curves, right? So therefore, what, is this, what does this equation say? What the equ this equation is saying is the gradient at any point is the parameter, right? The gradient is the parameter. 